There's somebody who lives here in Austin who sits on the board of United Healthcare. He gets paid $300,000 a year and he flies on a private jet to every one of the board meetings. We pay for that in our healthcare. Why should we pay for that? I ended up having a son in law school who I affectionately called the walking pre-existing condition because not only was he born with healthcare conditions and stayed for a lengthy period of time in the neonatal intensive care unit as a newborn, but at the age of five, we discovered he had cardiac issues. And then in high school, we discovered he had an immune deficiency. Insurance companies can't make money off of my son. Plain and simple, they can't. And so in a heartbeat, they would drop him if they could. Spending a career in healthcare finance for one of the largest hospital systems in the country gave me that insider's view to how inequitable our system is, how broken it is, how we finance it. And in Texas, which has the largest uninsured rate in the nation, five million people before the pandemic were uninsured. We finance it through a combination of our property taxes, we finance it through income taxes, and we also pay for it through our premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. Medicare for all is the right solution because one, everybody is covered. Two, you save lives. And when CEOs of pharmaceutical companies and when CEOs of healthcare insurance companies and even CEOs of hospital companies are making anywhere from $50,000 a day to $200,000 a day every day of the year, something is very, very broken and wrong with our system. I feel like I was so naive when I ran for office in 2018 and I kept thinking if I just talk to people about how healthcare is financed in America, they're gonna see the light and realize that Medicare for All is the right way to go. And then you realize there are special interests that have no interest in, in things changing. And you have candidates like Roger Williams, who I'm running against, who is beholden to the finance industry, big banks, to insurance companies, oil and gas, the defense industry. And do you think that he will ever vote against any of those industries when he's getting checks from them and they fund his campaign? Absolutely not. You can predict how somebody's gonna vote if you follow the money. I made a pact not to take a dime of PAC money because I want the folks in District 25 here in Texas to know that I will be accountable to them not to some special interest that is funding this campaign.